Welcome to the video review of the Toys R Us exclusive Age of Extinction Evolutions Bumblebee, or Bumblebees I should say. This set comes with two figures, a then figure and a now figure. This is absolutely insane if you ask me. Now there are other figures in this line including some of the Dinobots and they all come with mi Minicons or Microns. As opposed to Bumblebee here, who comes with a Legends class figure. This Bumblebee, the then figure, is a repaint of the 2013 Generations Legends Bumblebee. But instead of coming with a Target Master, he comes with this ginormous mech tech weapon, which was actually used by Jolt in Dark of the Moon. It's not a bad weapon per se, and it kind of looks like Bumblebee's gun from previous incarnations of his movie self, but it's just way too big for the figure, and he can't really hold it all that well without falling over. Just very, very weird decision to give him this giant gun. I, I don't really get that. This Generations Bumblebee figure, or the then figure, isn't exactly my first choice, but I'm glad they went with this one as opposed to one of the Minicons. I would have rather they gone back and reached into the Universe line and picked up one of the Bumblebees from there, as I think that would have been a better figure and more accurate to the show or the original version. He does have a fantastic head sculpt, though. I, I have to give them credit for painting a very nice-looking head sculpt there, but overall the figure is just yellow and black. And it's not a particularly good yellow. It's not a canary yellow. It's this weird sallow yellow. But I do appreciate the fact that the entire figure is a solid yellow. It's all the same yellow. Transformation for this guy is pretty simple. First, we'll start off, we'll start off by folding out his forearms, and then we'll automatically fold up his hands. Then put his feet together, fold or put his legs together, fold up his feet, then take the entire leg assembly and fold that as far as it'll go, and then collapse it up into what was his abdomen, and then bring the arms up and snap them into place, and you get this little bumblebee car mode that has a little bit more in the terms of paint apps than his robot mode, but not much. His mech tech weapon does fit on top, but not very well, as the hole on the top of the figure is just barely big enough to fit the peg for the gun. The gun, like I said, is just comically too large for the figure. I mean, the gun itself is almost bigger than the vehicle mode. I mean, come on, guys. Also, uh, the gun, like most Mechtep weapons, doesn't like snap into place or you can't keep it in its deployed mode, which I think would be better, in all honesty, but it just snaps right back. So the then figure isn't a bad addition. I'm glad they went with this guy as opposed to, as I said, a Minicon, but I think I would have rather have had one of the Universe figures from a previous Universe line. Oh well, still, it's not a bad addition. I think 10 minutes with a fine tip Sharpie really does improve Legends Bumblebee, don't you? Moving on to the now Bumblebee, this is the 20th deluxe class version of Movie Bumblebee that has been released in the United States. And believe me, I counted. I went to tf.info or tfinfo.com or one of those. I'll put the link down below. And I counted all of the different deluxe class bumblebees. This guy is number 20. Now this mold is the first time we're getting it here in the States. It's also going to be part of the Autobot Evolution 5 pack that I don't think is a Toys R Us exclusive, but it very well might be. That's going to have a repaint of this guy into a canary yellow as opposed to this orangish yellow that this figure is painted in. And that's one of the things I don't like about this figure is the paint. The plastic of the orange is, as far as I could tell, three different colors of orange. And I'll point them out as we go through the review. But overall, the figure is actually pretty nice looking in robot mode, except for the giant amount of kibble he has on the back of his legs and the back of his, and his backpack. But it's a very nice and well done evolution of High Octane Bumblebee, which we'll show a comparison here in a moment. I wanted to first give you guys a 360 look at the figure, so now let's go ahead and get up close with him. 
Comparing the two figures, High Octane over here and the new Bumblebee over here, you could see just how different these guys are. They have slightly similar ideas with the transformations, but they are vastly different figures. I mean, even the head sculpts are different. Heck, there's not a shared bit on either of these figures. The hands are different, the arms are different, everything's different. And I'm glad for that, because I really did not like High Octane Bumblebee. I thought it was a bad figure. But I kind of do dig this new guy. And I don't know why, because he's got a lot of problems. First of which, as I mentioned, is the paint. The paint on the chest and the feet are the same. Oh, uh, chest, shins, and feet. Well, and maybe some crotch. They're the same. But that paint is different from the quarter panel, the side panels, and the back panels which is different from the paint that is used for the back windscreen area and the hood, the roof, and the, tr and the trunklet. I'm sorry, the hood and the trunklet. So he's got three different flavors of orange-yellow paint on this guy. Really strange. Posability is okay, but you are going to run into problems just because of the backpack and just all the stuff he's got on him. But he does have nice, wide feet for you to pose him on, so you do have a nice big platform there. He has your usual ratchets in the hips and in the elbows. Every, uh, every joint has a swivel, everything moves. I appreciate that greatly. The head, however, is probably my favorite part of the figure. It's just so well detailed. I swear every version of Bumblebee in the deluxe class, his head sculpt gets better and better. It's really quite amazing. Considering the figure never says anything. One nifty thing about this figure is he does have a battle mode. To form the battle mode, first flip his right hand into his forearm. And you kind of have to get some bits out of the way first. And that will fold out the blaster. Then you can take one of the throwing stars that is attached to his back, which, I'll be honest, they're completely useless and they're just Texas stars. They're versions of the Lone Star of Texas. I don't know why these are in here. They're completely useless. He can't really do anything but hold them or store them on his back. And yes, I just did break something off. He holds it like he holds, a, I don't know, a cup or something. I, I don't know what that's for. The last part of his battle mode is by taking the Autobot crest on his head and pushing it forward to make a battle mask. I don't think I have that all the way down, but you get the idea. And he really does look like Stinger from the movie there, doesn't he? And now Bumblebee is ready for action. Personally, I would have rathered his left arm flip out into a cannon as well, as opposed to that stupid throwing star, but oh well. This figure's transformation is more fun than the high-octane version of, the, of Bumblebee. To start with, open up the chest and flip up the grill of the vehicle mode, and then you could close the chest back up. Then take the arms or the forearms and fold out the windows and flip the shoulder pads back, exposing the front quarter panels and the wheels. Come down to the legs and actually fold the, or I'm sorry, turn the entire leg 180 degrees so that the rear of the legs are pointing forward. And you do the turn on the swivel in the thigh. Then fold out the wheels that are on the back of the thighs and flip up the feet, folding out the little bits of paneling, of car paneling, and then flip up the legs into the back of the thighs. And push the bit of paneling around to the back of the wheels. Then there are these bumper sections that are on the wheels. Fold them over the knees and bring the legs together. Sometimes they come together easier than other times. Then we could take the hood, roof, and trunk and unfold those whole sections and they will fold back and snap into places. Now this is actually the hardest part of the transformation in all honesty is getting the panels to line up. And then we can take the arms and fold them up to the sides of the ve or to the side of the vehicle, and the windows on the sides will actually peg into where those throwing stars pegged into. And you're guaranteed to pop some panels out of place. You just are. 
and we'll get into that a little bit more in, in, a, in a minute or so. If my voice sounds raspy, that's because it is. I'm getting over a cold. Then the throwing stars can be stored underneath the back part or the back half of the vehicle, and they peg into the bottoms of Bumblebee's feet. So just get those in there. And as long as they're in nice and tight, they won't interfere with the wheels. And here we have the 2014 Camaro mode. Or was it 2015? I actually like this mold a lot. I think this is a really nice rendition of the Camaro. And the Camaro in the Age of Extinction is my favorite Camaro out of all his different modes. However, notice the difference in paint. I'm not sure how well that's showing up here on camera. But the paint for the paneling, the front quarter panel and the back quarter panel, is different from the paint on the doors. Specifically, the top part of the door, the bottom part of the door, is the same paint, and the top of the vehicle. Oh, and remember that all of this paint is different from his chest. So yeah, he has three different paints. Figure rolls with no problem whatsoever, even with those silly throwing stars. The only issue I really have, other than the paint, is the panel lining is just terrible on this guy. I mean, you could see panel gaps and panel lines everywhere on him, and it really mucks up at what would be a really nice car mode, other than, you know, the paint problem. The wheels are nice. They're hard plastic. They roll with no problem. Overall, it's not a bad version of the Camaro. I just wish by Primus Hasbro would for once get a Bumblebee figure that is solidly colored. And I'm talking movie figure that has the same coloring throughout, not three different versions of yellow, or in this case, orange. Returning Bumblebee to robot mode is just as simple. Simply pop the all the limbs off of where they should be, and they come off pretty easily. Open the chest, fold the grill down, and make sure it folds correctly into place. That's actually the hardest part of the transformation, in all honesty. Flip up the trunk and roof. And I like to just flip out the legs as they are, and then turn them around. So flip out the legs, and then individually turn them around. So. So uh, yeah, back to robot mode is real simple and really quick. Overall, the Toys R Us exclusive Age of Extinction Evolutions Deluxe Assortment of the Bumblebees is actually a pretty good set. Yeah, there are some problems with the paint, and of course there are going to be problems with the Deluxe Movie Bumblebee, but I'm okay with them, as the figure itself, or the figures, are actually fun, and I think kids are going to get a blast out of this set. So guys, as always, I have been Balt Matrix, and I hope you enjoyed this video review. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and as normal, I'll catch you next time.